mercury vortex propulsion. There is an idea that rapidly rotating mercury can cause a decrease in mass and actually achieve lift. The man you see at the right there is Samuel T. Cohen. He is the founder, the father of the neutron bomb. And if you ever want to read about a weapon that is absolutely terrifying, that has never been used in war, check out a neutron bomb. So Cohen said that something called red mercury was actually used on a neutron bomb. And we're going to see red mercury is very, very nebulous, but he claimed that they would mix radioactive isotopes with mercury to make red mercury. Mercury is also legendary. Its rumored applications are from stealth paint to summoning up genies or gin to extracting gold. One thing I read that I found hilarious, back in the early 2000s in the Middle East, a rumor started that Singer sewing machines were filled with red mercury. So almost overnight, the street value for a Singer sewing machine jumped to like $200,000 American. And these poor people in the Middle East that just had seamstress shops were getting their stores broken into for the legendary red mercury. As the surviving Nazis were fleeing in World War II, two U-boats were intercepted by the Allies going to Antarctica, and both were filled with red mercury. As far back as the Indian Vedic texts, they would talk about Vamanas and these incredible flying machines, and they had amazingly detailed diagrams and descriptions of them, so much so that Hitler actually sent teams to the Himalayas to look for some of this technology. And in the Indian Vedic texts, they said they were powered by mercury vortexes. Okay, another fantastic one. Un -un pentium also known as element 115. Now what fascinates me, the man we'll see in a minute that said it was real, actually said it was real a good 30 years before physicists were able to make it in a laboratory, which to me somewhat adds to its credibility. Physicists were able to do this in 2003. They took a layer of americium, element 95, and they hit it with calcium, element 20. So 95 plus 20 equals 115. They then officially changed the name to Moscovium because they were working with scientists on Russia for it. Now, here's the problem. If you all look at that last line, they can make it in a laboratory setting, but right now it will only exist for 200 milliseconds before, poof, it's gone. It's unstable. So it's tough to study something when its lifetime is so short. So a little pop culture real quick. In 2009, this was essentially the premise of the hit movie Avatar. The colonists are going to a distant planet where they have a room temperature superconductor that they call unobtainium, and they are actually trying to mine it there. So this could be similar to element 115. Lazar got a little bit of validation in 2016 to 2017, but Einstein's theory of general relativity was actually proven. Einstein, back in the 19-teens, came out with his theory of general relativity, and it refined what Isaac Newton said about gravity. Through ridiculous calculus that is called tensors, he was able to mathematically show that large masses, like stars, like planets, like moons, actually bend the fabric of outer space itself. So with our eyes, if we could see four dimensions instead of three, we could see this fabric. So Einstein gets validated for this, but if you really think about it, Bob Lazar does too, because 30, 40 years earlier, he's saying that these gravity waves exist. Our non pentium does not last for very long. So the best thing we can do is look at other elements that are in the column with it to see what they do. All of them in this column have five electrons in their outer shell, so they are fairly bondable. In 2004, Lazar claimed that a big breakthrough would happen when we could make stable forms of 115. Einstein's general relativity allows this, and technically, it allows for faster than light travel. You aren't violating special relativity by going faster than light, but if you warp to distant areas, bring them temporarily close together, and then hop across and let go, you can get to more distant places even faster than a beam of light actually could. <laughs> 